Welcome to the Camp Owners Podcast, everybody. We're thrilled to have Travis Allison on the Camp Owners Podcast today. We're here to talk about all things we should be thinking about, uh, not only today, preparation for next summer, but beyond, whether it's AI, climate change, retention, marketing, um, things to really be thinking about and digging into in this off season. Kelly and I really, really enjoyed this conversation, and we hope you do too. Welcome to the Camp Owners Podcast. Welcome to the Camp Owners Podcast, a space for camp owners to talk about the unique aspects of camp ownership and get inspired by each other. We are going to sit down with camp industry experts, leaders, and fellow camp owners to hear about their camp dreams and how they transpired. We're going to learn from each other and discuss some of the biggest issues in the private camp industry. Hello, friends. My name is Howie Grossinger. I am the co-owner of Camp Robin Hood, a day camp in the suburbs of Toronto, and a co-owner of Camp Walden, an overnight camp in Ontario as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelly Shuna. I am co-owner and executive director of Hidden Pines Ranch Day Camp located in Stillwater, Minnesota. If you are looking to find and subscribe to the Camp Owners Podcast, you can either find us online at gocamp.pro slash owners pod or by searching for us in your favorite podcast app. Finally, if you're listening to this and thinking, oh my gosh, this is the best podcast ever for camp owners and future camp <laughs> owners, please encourage them to listen and find that, find us on their favorite podcast app. Howie, um, how are you? Ellie, hello. Great to be together again, uh, recording another uh, show in season four, which we're really excited to be part of. And tonight, Today, we have a very special treat. Um, we have a great topic, uh, an explore, uh, I guess an explorative, exploratory topic about the industry, uh, something I know you and, and I have talked about, but we have someone on the show who is always thinking future of the industry. Um, we've got the boss on the show, quite honestly, Kelly. <laughs> we, have to, we have to behave ourselves, but... Uh, uh, the person, along with his wife, Beth, who started it all on the Go Camp Pro Network. We have Travis Allison with us, uh, the OG of the Camp uh, the, the Camp Hacker podcast and the great crew that he uh, coordinates those shows with. So, Travis, welcome to the Camp Owners Podcast. Thank you both for having me back. It's awesome to be here. And Kelly, I love your intro Um camp owners or people who want to be camp owners because it's always those people that come up to me and say I get so much out of the camp owners podcast and I'm not an owner I was like I know they're great you should all listen well, everybody should listen to this one that's wonderful that, it yeah. is thank you for that it's uh we've gotten similar feedback it's been really fun I think we've been able to um just kind of just traverse the entire spectrum with our topics which is great and we love the focus you've been able to provide us over the last uh, three seasons or so. And and uh, it's been fun. And uh, I think big shout out to you, Travis, because I we wouldn't have met each other unless it, unless it was for you. So you are the camp version of like the matchmaker. If you watch all those Netflix shows <laughs> about all the matchmaking, cultural matchmaking shows, you, di you do this in the industry and you brought us together and you know, Kelly and our families have developed this wonderful friendship through this. So Amazing. want to thank you for that as well. Um, you know, I, I think that um, any introduction of you on this show, Travis, um, you know, in, in many ways goes without saying you've been such an incredible resource. Uh, the platform you've created, particularly through the pandemic, has been the most incredible resource to everybody. And I think we're all benefiting from it in, in, in each of our ways. Um, but also the network you've created amongst professionals, new veteran, budding, experienced has been wonderful. So, um, Kelly, you got to stroke the boss in some of these kinds of things. You got to like <laughs> pump his tires a little He's bit. Fine. So He's I just fine. Check box, I just checkboxed that one. So, <laughs> but, but, but more than anything, the resources you've created, the, uh, the programs you've allowed industry people to get involved in has been great. So, Kelly, with with I think as per usual, we'd love Travis just to briefly talk about his journey in camp quickly. It's a very extensive one. I'm sure the elevator pitch of his of his journey is well ingrained in his head right now. But just to set the tone, 
I'd love for you to do that, Travis, and then Kelly and I can jump into what we're going to talk about and and just discuss over the next little bit. Is that cool? Yeah, that's great. That's really awesome. Great. So yeah, the floor is yours. Go for it. It has been a long been a long camp journey. I was a third generation to to in my family to grow up at Camp Kintail, and um, it, I've told the story lots. So I'll keep it short. When I was 13 years old and felt like I didn't have a place in the world, my Camp Kintail counselor Ian McLean pulled me aside at a rest hour and said, "Travis, you'll be a great camp counselor." And I think that there is zero chance the three of us would be on this conversation had Ian not done that. So. Um, I, Remembering that moment and teaching uh, staff and other camp professionals about creating those moments is entirely why we're all here, so that we can all be thoughtful about noticing and appreciating um, kids like me who didn't have a place to fit in, kids who just, you know, in that day don't feel like themselves. Um, so that's 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 the most important of my camp stories my wife beth and i um were executive directors of an organization that ran five summer camps and we did that for 15 years and then now the last 15 years we've been doing consulting um beth really focused on staff retention and recruiting and me a lot of marketing and sort of business strategy stuff amazing that's incredible yeah howie i am feeling like um our staff a little bit, like our, our boss is here, you know, and we really have to very do our best. And then with that, just epic story, not epic, but such a long history of being in camping is, I don't know. I'm so excited to learn from you today, Travis. I think just your vast experience. So this is going to be awesome. So how we was inspired by your topic at the recent conference. So that was really the, yeah. you know, kind of impetus for wanting to have you on the show and you have um, something new and exciting coming out. So I think let's start um, with the topic today. How you want to introduce sure. it? How are we going to learn from Travis? Yeah, we did a really unique thing at last year's Ontario Camps Association Conference. And it was a, it was a very uh, wonderful opening of vignettes of perspective from different aspects of the industry within our province. And, and, um, Travis was asked to provide um, a, an intro to a, a vision of what camp may look like moving forward, things the industry should be thinking about. And um, as Travis and I got talking and I sort of thought about what's most on the minds of camp owners and the industry as a whole is, you know, what is the next three to eight, three to 10, five to 15 years look like in the industry? as it relates to all topics and whether or not we get to these topics, these may be things we want to talk about in, in over the course of this season, Kelly, like, is there a ceiling for where fees are going in the industry are, you know, how are we managing climate and issues of property protection in the insurance world? Where are we finding new campers? Uh, the pandemic has provided us with this really great cushion of, camper retention uh but where does where does um the future of staffing goes which has been for the last year and a half the whole topic and many more of which i think travis will you know raise and his perspective and and maybe coupled with our own experiences can provide some real value to the listeners today about things they potentially should be thinking about so Travis, I hope that accurately portrayed or or, or set up our, our conversation. And I thought I would just turn it over to you with some of the things that are on your mind. And then maybe we could talk about each of them as a group. Yeah, thank you for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, great introduction, Howie, um, and summary of that very cool experience that, um, that we were part of. So there's lots of different pieces of it. I think the thing I want to drop at the beginning, because I don't think anybody knows how it's going to affect us, but it is... It's going to affect us way sooner than anyone thinks. And I think that artificial intelligence is going to have an impact that we can't imagine on camps because there's some interesting research from IBM that was posted last month that says, you know, the amount of jobs we've heard on the news, the amount of jobs that are going to be interrupted by artificial intelligence. They said, if your job in, or your skills are communication, problem solving, leadership, working as a group, you'll be fine. So I think that the impact on us as an industry is, I think AI is going to be a great tool for us. I hope it'll save us a lot of time and effort and um, 
really just enable us to keep our expenses low to help families afford it. Um, but where I'm, so there's, there's lots to explore there. This probably isn't the best time for it. I will say that AI's most probable biggest impact on the industry is going to be how it affects our families. You know, what, what we do is very, you know, is almost AI proof because it's stuff that, that AI can't do, but a lot of our families, I think are, their jobs are going to be affected very soon. Um, the changes coming from that will happen really quickly this winter and, um, and how that's going to impact our parents is we're going to have to be cautious of that and, and thinking about it. So, so drilling down into that, it, it's, it's a, it's a thought about how the employment world will work for our families in terms of ultimate affordability of camp. If people are in industries that are impacted by AI and have a reshifting of their own job situation. I, I mean, I, I would imagine that would be one of it because so many industries, and I, I love your, I think that's a very accurate portrayal of camp and AI in terms of what we deliver and how that human personal element of everything we do is will continue to stand out front in terms of the deliverable that we provide. But, um, you know, can you can you just elaborate on, on some of the what you perceive to be the specific impact on potential camp families as it relates to AI? I, I'm imagining work and, and employment is one of them. What, what else comes to mind? No, it really, I mean, I think the stuff outside of work, it will impact every every piece of software. I and, mean, you know, we, we deal with hundreds of pieces of software a day. Every piece of software will, will be impacted by this. But really the work thing, I think is the thing that we need to be thinking about. I mean, I'm, I don't even know how to deal with it. I think we just have to start to get ready for the fact that the people whose work is going to be most impacted are what we um, you know, traditionally think of as white collar workers. So the people that are send their kids to us, you know, that have jobs that have been, you know, well paying enough that they can afford to send their, their children to camp, um, those jobs are going to be impacted. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I would love to see a camp um, put up their hand and say, we want to have a parents forum and bring in some people to talk about new work and, and just have parents talk about that just so parent, the camp can learn so they can, you know, be that kind of a resource for their families. But it's, it's like, there's, you know, there's hints of what's coming, but they're so dim. I think the actual change will be so great. It is like, you know, the first five years of the internet, how much our lives changed in that. It, it, it'll it happen 10 times as fast as that. I, I, would I, also I don't like the hyperbole. Yeah. I'm sorry for that. But yeah. it is true. It is happening so fast. Well, I think it's entirely fair because I think that aside from the work issue, the way that even kids and their families interact with the influence of AI, you know, we're seeing just even the profiles of kids and staff who live in a world so influenced by AI and us being the ultimate kind of safe haven for returning to what has always been just so personal and, and relationship based. We're living in a world where the young, young kids are growing it up um, largely, you know, tethered to technology in a way that we've never seen before. And we continue to remain this safe place in so many ways of kind of, putting that aside for however long they're at camp. So so I think we have to navigate. And, and the thing that comes to mind for me, and, and Kelly, I know you want to get in on this, is how when when um, when cell phones became so, so prevalent, how do we manage cell phones at camp and stuff? And it gets to a point where you kind of have to sort of, are you going to draw your line in the sand and say no phones, which so many in the industry have still tried to maintain or have maintained? Or how do you marry the need for staff to be away from their phones and technology and still make a commitment to you for nine weeks or 10 weeks and have limited access to what they're always used to having? And so it just got me thinking, Travis, I don't know, like if, if like about those adaptations we have to make as operators to embrace what's coming our way and still make it fit in philosophically into what do we, we've traditionally delivered. So I don't know if that's consistent with what you were thinking, Kelly, but that's what came to mind in this last commentary from Travis. Well, I'm curious. I want to go back to how, Travis, you said this winter. So 
I think that's going to grab the attention of those listening to this. So tell me why you are feeling like this winter is when we are going to feel the going to feel that significantly, or it's, there's going to be major changes. Why do you say this winter? Well, um, because of all the software that we use is going to start to have it. If you are a Microsoft 365 business, you already have it built in. Um, and you'll start to see more cues visually in the software. Like you can use AI to solve this. You can use AI to get this started. That's, that's kind of the, the most basic level it'll happen in all software that we engage with. Um, the other thing that I, I think about that's going to happen um, is that parental expectations are going to change because everywhere outside of camp, all of the other organizations that they interact with, um, not necessarily youth organizations, we all know that youth organizations are a little behind the curve in adapting some of, some of these things, um, but they'll be used to things happening at incredible speed. So they'll be used to interacting with chatbots who can actually interact as a human and getting answers. So I believe every camp should be looking right now at software that takes their entire parent handbook and any videos they've done, all the stuff that can suck all that information in and you put that on the on the front page of your website so that they can access it. Um, there'll come a point in software's like, I don't know, we'll pass it up to a real person, people will know it's AI, but they'll be so used to it that they won't do it. Um, so that, that's one thing, and the direct thing we'll have to address this winter. Um, the, the other piece, and this is to what you're saying, Howie, is I think as an industry, we could do much better at helping our people cope with not having their phones. Um, you know, having the rule that we don't have a phone, we know is um, not effective. And then just saying, you know, as if as if I was my dad saying, well, you just have to lump it like you don't get your phone. Like that's not that's not going to work. Um, it's not kind to the people that we care about and want to look after our campers. It's not thoughtful based on the needs that they have every day and and the habits they've built up. We have to be intentional about that. And that, Kelly, I think comes back to there's just going to people are it's hard to imagine people being more tied to their phone and the internet but everything will be built to do that around us. So yeah, interesting. And just all those wheels are turning, Travis, not only what we can do, how we can support, but that is a big one that is going to grab individuals' attention is how that is going to affect parents and families and guardians of our campers and sending them to camp and what that looks like. That's, Good thing it's the off season, Travis. So you're really giving us something really meaty to chew on in well, this time well, where we actually have the capacity. Yeah, and I and I think to to one of your last points, Travis, is that I think that the industry has to give some good thought about how the acquisition experience for staff and camper families, right? And I I think you raise a really good point about how our websites and our sort of um, online interact, you know, interactive tools we provide, you know, are consistent with what families are experiencing in other industries, whether you're on a, you know, you're trying to, you know, you're on uh, a travel website and trying to book a flight somewhere. And, you know, those sites have kind of adapted to intuitive kind of easy, e you know, user experiences that are quite, quite, um, for the most part, I would imagine, I know in my own experience are pretty easy to use. And I think that when parents are looking for a summer camp experience, given their other interactions in other industries, we need to start thinking about how we can mirror those experiences or make them as close to what people are looking for. Um, you know, in the private camp industry, we we are charging, we are charging good bucks. And that justification for our fees has to be realized from, I would imagine, from the very first touch points that families are having with you if you're asking for them to pay this amount. So I think we are we just can't rely on, well, it's in the summer we're going to deliver on our promise. Delivering on your promise starts with the very first impressions you make online or in other ways you communicate. And 
I know the industry is expanding all the time on the tools that can happen. And it just got me thinking about that stuff as it relates to this topic of AI or online experiences. So I don't know if you have something to add to that, but that's what came to mind when you mentioned all that stuff. It is, it is definitely going to impact us. I think that one of the things we're working with a lot of our clients on right now is how we change the web interfaces to be ready for those things. If you look at camp websites, and I am probably one of the people in the industry who's looked at the most camp websites uh, because of the way my job works, um, we all kind of look the same and all of our sites look like 10 years ago. And you know, so what we're working on right now with clients is how do we change websites to make them more usable, um, to, to really get them ready for this. Um, you know, for for this kind of interaction. And the other, you know, the, the, the honest piece of advice I would give to everybody listening is this is a thing you need to practice. Uh, interacting with AI and using it for your business, which again, I say, I think this will make our jobs easier. It's a, something that you're going to have to learn, going to practice and get used to. Um, one of the things that I have been saying has been kind of a theme of mine for the last two, three years is that camp directors and camp owners have to understand that in our industry, change is God. Change will happen constantly. It'll happen when we don't expect it. We, our job is to get ready for change. Um, it's certainly to, to help our families and, and staff and campers get ready for change too, give them those skills. But we have to accept that that's part of, like, we just have to learn these things. We have to be open to change and try these things out so that um, we don't fall behind, of course, but just so that we can show the kind of leadership that um, but we can continue to show the kind of leadership and thoughtfulness and intentionality that we have with our families. Well, and, and, and we learned that firsthand, you know, during COVID, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, right? We all adapted. And, and, you know, I think that this topic is, kind of creating, you know, the necessities for us to adapt and just to keep up with. I think the industry has proven to itself in in recent history that we're capable of doing that. And, and so many of us have successfully navigated all kinds of challenges that we never imagined that we know Kelly and I have talked to, you know, former owners and operators just simply saying, I'm kind of glad I don't run camp today, you know, kind of thing, because the change now is coming along so much quicker and that need for adaptation is probably more than it's ever been in this very short window that we've all recently experienced so i think it's i think it's um some things i mean we we knew this topic or the things we're going to talk about will get people thinking uh, a little more so I'm, this is this was a really good one to kick off with for sure kelly so travis we have one so far i like to just point them out in like a little bullet points and the bullet pointer um, but for our listeners, the first takeaway from Travis Allison today is to be thinking about AI's impact on your website. So take, looking at your website, chatbot, um, your information for parents, how accessible is it? So that's takeaway number one, homework. We'll call it homework, off-season homework. Um, two is to be thinking about how that impacts your camper families and attendance mm -hmm. and their employment. Um, what's the third thing working down our list that you want camp owners, aspiring camp owners as well, directors to be thinking about right now, or you think we need to be paying attention to? Outside of the topic, outside of AI, you mean, Kelly, or is that what you're looking for? Um, I think with, I, if with AI or, um, you know, along with that, is there, you know, like, I guess we talked, we talked about the software what can we do for those families or what do you think the industry can be doing for those families in regards to employment and their impact on jobs well this is one of those interesting opportunities where we know how to talk to and work with our families um and we know how to be a resource to them so just continue to be that like i say i i look forward to hearing about the camp that just puts opens up a, a night discussion with some ai expert that you know can talk to families you know that's gonna not gonna have a, a language barrier with them and just create a spot for them to talk about it talk about how it's going to affect their kids etc um like every single thing in camp, it's all going to be how we communicate. You know, we have to be thoughtful and intentional, very good listeners at this point. 
Yeah. So let's let's move on uh, from AI and some of the tech kind of stuff. Are there other things? I know that there were some things that I I heard you talk about that were really intriguing. Some things that we should be thinking about. What what else comes to mind for you? A hundred percent climate change that we do not fully we have not fully got ourselves to the point that we are ready for the client impacts that happened in 2023. Um, you know, I heard of lots of camps this summer who had three weeks of air quality warnings because of fires and the, like three weeks where we can't take our campers outside. What is, that's the kind of stuff we're going to have to be ready for. We're going to have to be ready for, um, you know, sort of things happening far away that impact us. We're going to have to be ready for much bigger storms we're going to have to be ready for a lot bit a lot more heat um i definitely think that anybody in this business who builds a building now needs to put air conditioning in it and i know that that's going to upset the the summer camp purists but it is just now a health and safety thing it is not just a comfort you know cozy place um i think it's a health and safety thing to have that ability to cool your campers off um and most of us are not built that way of course but anything new, we're going to have to be thinking about heat reduction. Some really interesting research I read this summer about the effectiveness uh, of staff in problem solving. So it's the effectiveness of outdoor workers in problem solving, even just noticing things wrong. Just what a dip it takes as the temperature rises over 80 degrees. Um, and I, we had camps this summer that I talked to who are working in 120 degree weather. And yeah, sure. um, it just we have to think about these things differently. I think about two summers ago, um, uh, our friend Charlie Corley at her camp, they had a massive storm, one of those derecho wind storms. And it, um, it took out a ton of buildings, like all these things happened on Friday night at 11, um, which always seems to be the case in overnight camp. Um, the bad things always happen then. But they, they were at camp, they had no power, uh, a lot of their buildings were damaged and they realized that they didn't have the ability at that time um, to get their their community off of the site that they were, you know, the ability to use that site was hugely reduced because of the storm. Um, you know, camper cabins were destroyed, et cetera. L no one hurt, luckily, but um, like we didn't think in our our you know, when we're thinking about things, it's like, what do we do if we need to get everybody away from this place? If we have a flood, which is not not what happened at Robindale, but, um, you know, if we have a flood, what do we do? If we have all these different things, our plans are just, our emergency plans are just going to have to keep getting deeper and deeper. Yeah, and I think that more than ever, and and we learn this from where we're situated as well, that, you know, the transparency that is, I think, needed to communicate to families more than ever that you are thinking about it, because we are also experiencing as much as, as much as parents are asking questions about supervision ratios and what your swim program is life, like, and is the bus safe? Can I send my kid on a bus? Hmm. Yeah. We're starting to get more questions about... Do you have an evacuation plan? You know, is there, you know, how are you dealing with air quality? So the, so we're seeing a, a real uptick. And I know we found ourselves, and I don't know if you did, Kelly, but given where we're situated, you know, I was, I mean, I bookmarked, you know, air quality index every morning, and I had to communicate to our day camp families that we were going into what would be the equivalent of announcing a snow day right? At what time in the morning would we here at Camp Robin Hood tell you that the, the, the air quality is projected to get to X and we're not going to send our buses, right? Yep. And so it, it felt like we were really diving into that more than ever. But but those are things that I think are very real. And um, I think I think from a customer service point of view, which I know Travis and we're all very in tune with, is the more you can get ahead of those things and let parents know that you're thinking about it. It's very reassuring. And I know there'll be listeners here who probably say, listen, just tell them when they really need to know. Maybe that works, but I think we really do need to embrace don't know if it this. does anymore. Yeah. I don't think so. I personally don't think that's the case, but, but, um, and we've prided ourselves in trying to get ahead of things, but I think that issue of, uh, of the climate stuff is going to be more part of the conversation than ever 
And I, I just think it's going to increase over the years. So that's a, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's been on my mind as well. Kelly? Oh, it was a huge thing. It gave me uh, flashbacks of COVID to mm -hmm. be sending these health and safety emails to families. And, you know, like you said, Howie, here's your projection. And, you know, we, you know, honor your family's choice of all. If you'd like to send your camper, here's our plan. Here's what we'll be doing. Here's how we'll handle it. Again, you know, we will lean into your choice as a family, but it was in it. It's an interesting thing, Travis, and it almost feels counterintuitive of camp to be inside so much more than and what we want and what we envision. But I know from our perspective at our camp, we definitely were making heat plans about how we're going to get, you know, dividing up our kids. Okay, when are we going to get them inside for at least an hour in the AC? It was like, we're now in our off season working on a heat plan besides a rain plan. We used to have rain day plans. Now it's yeah heat plan. Now it's an air quality plan to have all of those things in place instead of, oh, okay, how are we going to do this? Now it's going to have to be just a part of our protocol, which will be make it easier for us to know like, yep, let's activate the heat plan. Let's activate the air quality plan. But it was definitely a big thing for us this summer. And just hearing you talk about that, I... I'm like, okay, our next building at camp, it's going to have to be multi-purpose, but it's going to have to have yeah. a big AC system because yeah, it's not going to go away, unfortunately. So it is a lot for us to think about. Absolutely. For, for sure. And, and I think that just the perception of, well, the kids get cooled off because um, we get them in the water twice a day or whatever your plan is just isn't enough these days. You know, everyone is, you know, you have to really re reconsider as well, particularly those camps that are drawing water from other sources than municipalities and their capacity and their ability to refill or provide access to hydration at a greater frequency and level. I mean, I know those are things that I've been thinking about. Um, I, I know my wife, Sari, will appreciate this comment. She's been thinking about you know, misters as part of a scheduled time yep. to set up misting stations around 100%. camp. And, you know, I know that I get periodic links to all kinds of things that we should be thinking about, but I'm actually considering how can I adapt my water infrastructure to create spaces in camp where we can physically cool off kids outside of getting in the water. Mm -hmm. And not everyone can afford the splash pad to augment water. And, and, and those are expensive propositions, but there are all kinds of very, I think, ultimately way more economical approaches to getting kids cooled off through those um, kinds of approaches. And I think that the industry is, is thinking about that and should be thinking about that more than ever um, because, um, you know, parents are wondering, you know, you know, how is my kid staying cool all day? And if, for those of us in the overnight space or the country-esque day camp space where air conditioned buildings are not the norm, you got to get creative, but you got to be intentional more than ever now, I think. We brought ascots back in fashion at Hidden Nice. Pine. Love ah, it. Nice. Had, we had cooling towels and I was like, campers, would you like to wear it like a bandana, more of an ascot look? <laughs> I love that. Today? So we had like a clean cooling towels and ice buckets and then yeah, we smart. The dirty ones and we were Love doing that. lots of laundry but hey it was a fashion thing but also a cooling thing so it's we totally had to think differently and how are we going to provide that how are we going to wash them you know which yeah. ones are better but definitely something i didn't think we'd be doing so much of um this summer yeah yeah, really, really important. Anything else on climate? I mean, I think I think just weather extremes are so prevalent yep. now, but also we touched on water and cooling off and stuff like that. I was wondering, you know, I think that, you know, I, it's also interesting because, you know, I think historically we've, we've with, if you live in North America, you've come in tuned with this kind of tornado belt of the United States that, I mean, high winds are just part of every part of this continent. Um, yep. And I think we're all having to rethink and probably take further inventory of our existing structures and how they can withstand things too, which I think should be part of every operator's, you know, inventory of things to do with their site people too, because, you know, what we relied on as protection, you know, 
10 years ago, I think, you know, I think, you know, there's probably going to be an uptick on capital expenses for reinforcement or reconsideration of those structures too, whether they be sleeping quarters or just structures that provide shelter. I think those are big, you know, many of the many of the pop-up tents we bought for shelter during COVID, we we quickly all discovered that they get blown over pretty <laughs> quickly. So so some of us are having to invest in more permanent structures, but that that is just the reality of, of some of the climate issues we're facing. I don't know what if you have anything to add to that, Travis. No, I um the classic interview. No, I don't have anything to add, but I have this to say. Um I learned from the best. What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, the, I, I always feel badly being the one who has the time to think about these things and to have to put up my hand and say, um, here's the thing I don't think we're talking about enough. And, and so, so I do feel badly about that. The, the thing that is coming to mind, it's interesting how my job has changed since the pandemic, um, where I was really focused on marketing and communications with camps. It's my job is changing into a lot more helping camps develop systems to accommodate these things and have systems mentalities and and all that stuff built into their um, into their staff so that they're just looking for ways that they're set up to solve problems. And I worked with a camp this summer. I sat down with their senior staff and we talked about um, the we talked about this idea that came out of manufacturing, started at Toyota. Um, it, is commonly known as lean manufacturing. And it, it's definitely in the business world, but it means creating systems and empowering your staff to make changes to make things better. And one of the people that I follow that I think has the right idea um, expects that their staff members will make a change every day in the way their, their organization works to make something two seconds faster. And so it's not a big ask, you know, it is how we how we load people into a dining hall how we get kids on the buses it, can you think of something that would make it two make this two second better whether it's you know getting in the, on the bus and the, the lines are bent around some corner and they're like no if we just move this thing we can make a nice straight line and you oh, know yeah. the staff can double check the kids on the way like stuff like that empowering your staff to be problem solvers teaching them the skills we all know that staff have different life experiences in the last few years that sometimes mean that they are really intimidated by solving problems. And so we just teach them the skills to look at problems, help them clearly understand their, you know, when they can make changes for the better, but make sure that it's kind of a requirement. Um, and the staff that I talked to about it had some really interesting things that they did this summer that were so small, but became so exciting and defining parts of the changes of the 2023 summer. Well, and look and look at the benefits of that exercise, right? Improving staff culture. They really want to know how what I think. You know, I live this every day. You know, I think camps today who are putting their eggs in the communication basket of frontline counselors have the hardest job of everybody. And if we're now investing in getting their opinions and having them provide, you know, freedom to give some input and and put that into the cauldron of all the changes you may want to make i think that just speaks to helping yourself or hedging your bets on staff retention too because the more young people want to work in a place where that where their opinions are valued and and yes communicated respectfully which we all hope they will because you know people can have opinions and not present them well we have to create an environment where it is welcomed and we teach them the way to you know, give that input. I, I I think I think that's going to be a huge element of staff retention in the future. Um, mm -hmm. Whether your camp has 60 staff or 260 staff, it doesn't matter. I think that is something we need to embrace as operators because I think I think just the this generation of staff and young people just see the world in a different way and are and really want to provide their opinions. And we're in a great position to coach them how to do that well, because it'll serve them well beyond what they do with us. So uh, I think it's a great topic. And it, it's it's so funny. I, I think of your example of just how do we make just lining up differently? And how do we make yeah. the salad, the salad line move faster? And, and yep. it's, I think it's awesome. I think that's great stuff. 
buddy checks and pools like that's the you know it's from time like that is one of those things that you just learn and if people are empowered to make change and let's full circle this this is good for us for staff recruiting and we can say these are the skills of the future that we have already been teaching you as you've grown up here if these are when you're looking for a summer job um, IBM says these are the skills you have to ha have to have, and this is totally aligned with 21st century skills that the industry's been talking about off and on um, for almost 10 years now, and it's so well aligned. So I think it becomes the thing you talked about parents too. It's a thing you talk about staff when you're recruiting them. All of those things are part of it. You know, we're going to give you problem solving skills, um, and we have to tell the good stories that illustrate how we do all those things for them. For sure. All right, Travis, as we wrap up, which is difficult to do, um, I want to hear, and I know how he does too, um, about your new resource that you are going to be providing for camp and camp families, camp professionals. I We want to hear all about it. Feels like we're breaking, breaking news, breaking a hot topic. <laughs> Tell us, Travis, what have you been working on this summer? Well, it, Joanna Warren Smith and I, who we've done a number of marketing for camp programs, uh, teaching marketing for camp programs, um, we decided this year that we wanted somebody, people to have something in their hands. And so this summer, based on some of the stuff we've done before, we wrote the camper recruitment recruitment and retention playbook. And we sort of purposely said, we could have a more creative title for this. We want people to understand that this is practical. This is the kind of thing. So. Um, We've kept it easy to, to read, easy to understand. We've employed all of the things that we try to teach uh, camps about how to communicate, make things easy to skim, make it easy to find the, the part that you need, et cetera. So um, this is some kind of introductory things about marketing to make marketing easier because a lot of us didn't get in, most of us didn't get into this job because of marketing, um, but I've had to accept that as part of the role. And so the whole thing is, how do we make this easier for those people? So it's laid out by month. It focuses on five specific groups of people. There's a heavy focus on retention and then some real specific things you can do to get new families into your camp community doing it. And we've every month has a whole bunch of different things you can do. And um, we've prioritized them. It's like, this is the most effective thing. Start here. And just that that one first step, I think, makes this a unique resource where it's not like, here's the philosophy of marketing. It's like, here's the thing to do. Do this first. It, it'll be effective for you. Yeah. And it sounds like it's something that will be like respectful of everyone's time. Like you're really getting into it and giving everybody that, you know, that opportunity to dig in to the recommendations and resource that you're providing. So that sounds pretty awesome. Everyone should check that out. Yep. Yeah, if you um if you go to gocamp.pro, you'll see in the banner up there there is a link to depending on when you listen to this episode, either to be notified when the book comes out or to the book. Um, you'll see that right at the top of the page. Look at this one stop shop. We've got tools for camper retention, recruitment. We've got things for our staff to be or for us to be thinking about to give our staff. We've got things for owners and future directors be thinking about what to do in this off season. Very nice, Travis. Thank you. What a nice little sprinkle, little sprinkle of things for our listeners. Um, all right. Well, again, Howie, we have a problem. We're going to need to move to a two hour podcast because there's always so much to talk about. This is a challenge <laughs> to keep us um, on our time limit, but we want to be good about that. So we are going to move on to our inspiration portion of our show and so each episode, we like to share something that's inspiring us right now. It can be a book, article, podcast, documentary, leadership quote, anything that's giving you fuel for your fire um, to keep doing the great work that camp is doing. I will be a good role model and I'll start off first. I just got introduced to a new podcast called Nurture versus Nurture with Dr. Wendy Mogul. And I think she actually spoke at an ACA. Yes. Conference. Yes, totally. and OCA, and OCA, uh, yep. Blessings of a Skin Knee, I think is part of what is in her wheelhouse. Great book. Okay, so she's got a great podcast and I just love her, you know, she has so much promotion of resilience and accountability um, and self-reliance for kids. So I have been introduced to her in a new modality. Um, so Nurture versus Nurture podcast with Wendy Mogul is my thing that's really giving me some good things to think about um, with our campers for next summer. All right, Howie, you want to go next? 
Absolutely. I, I think my inspiration is about uh, kind of a, a certain segment of the industry that I've, I've been really inspired by um, recently, and that is the next gen. Um, just um, I'm just really impressed with so many more resources that are out there online. Uh, in addition to this wonderful platform, there are a lot of people putting in good work on the the relevant topics that are today. Uh, I just I just think you know if you're a listener and you're one, you're a member of that next gen in the industry, you know I hope this provides you with a lot of stuff. But I think the up the, the conference season, whether it's in Ontario or whether it's tri-state or national or the other regional ones, I think if everybody isn't tapping into how young professionals in the industry are viewing either wanting to get into this industry or um, providing insight into what some of us uh, of our vintage might be thinking about. I think we're not doing everyone a, a service. And, you know, I, you know, as many of you know, and, and I know this group knows, I'm, I'm working with a family member, my daughter, who's part of that next gen and the, the crew that, you know, she's working with and expanding. I, I'm just blown away. And I think we as industry people are only made better if we're adapting and thinking about those things. And some of these topics that we address today, I think we need to put in the hands of our young leadership team members to give us more insight. And so my inspiration is just, you know, all those people who are just making us better. And um, I just wanted to throw that out there because there's so many good things happening right now and we've got to embrace all of it. Awesome, Howie. Thank you. All right, Travis, what would you like to share with our listeners today? So the last time I was on the Camp Honors pod was when I learned about Ted Lasso. Uh, and we hadn't seen it. And um, <laughs> we became huge fans. And so I think the Ted Lasso of 2023 is a, a show on Disney Plus called The Bear. Um, and it is a lot more cursy than Ted Lasso, although Hannah Waddingham's character cursed a lot in Ted Lasso. Um, but it is interesting to watch. It's about a, a family-run restaurant in Chicago that's going through some big changes. And it's about the dynamics of that, the people that work for them, the people that are family, the people that aren't. The first season was good. The second season was mind-blowing. Um, and uh, just to see the transformation of people over this time and how they came together as a team. One of the episodes is about one of the family characters named Cousin Richie, and he goes to work at a restaurant to learn a uh, hospitality, the front of house stuff for a restaurant. And it is just amazing to see the intentionality of it. One of the scenes, he's reading this book, um, which is called Unreasonable Hospitality uh, by Will Godara. And he is um, the owner and founder of a few famous restaurants, including um, 11, 11 Madison Park, which is one of the big famous New York restaurants um, that is known for not only great food, but incredible service. And so unreasonable service as the uh, the thing goes. So this is one of my, this is now top of my list of uh, business books for people who don't like business books. If you're watching on YouTube, you can maybe see, oh, it's not really good focus, how many tabs are folded over. Every end page has notes on it. Um, I can vouch for it, that. There's lots of stuff there. He's marked this one up. Yeah, it is. So that that book is my big one for this year. Everybody needs, I think the industry needs to sit down and read this book. Uh, so much to learn from. As I say, I, I often worried that what the stuff I bring up or things I talk about make me feel like there's an extra burden on camp pros. And I'm always sensitive to that. But I think just this act of thinking more intentionally, again, it goes back to two second improvements, um, thinking more intentionally and teaching your staff to be super intentional for caring for people. Um, this is a great book, lots of stories, a lot of anecdotes and case studies. And that makes a good business book for people who don't like business books. Um, yeah, read it. It's an amazing book. Um, yeah, I, I noticed that. I haven't read it yet. I plan to. But that episode that you referenced was the genius of being a leader in camp uh, is one where you can set your people up for success and learn when they don't think they're really being taught something. So yeah. I just, it's great. It's a great, it's a great show. Check it out. Kelly, I don't know if you've seen it, but you, you got to get on that. No, I'm so excited that you're just opening my eyes here, Travis. I like it. I love a new good show and a book. Yeah. I'm pumped. And a book. Thank you, Shoot, Travis. Show and book. You're 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 gonna be busy, Kelly. 
I'm set. I'm, I mean, I've been, you know, there's nothing else to do. No, I'm just kidding. Right on. I'm so Thanks. excited. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for that, Travis. That's great. Thank you, Kelly, as well. Um, this has been a great discussion and so thought provoking. And thanks for to everybody, particularly Travis, for just always keeping your eye on the prize of what's next and challenging us to think a little differently. And and um, and, and I hope it's helpful to the entire audience for sure. Travis, I, I know a lot of people know how to get a hold of you, but maybe one more time if if people want to reach out and and look more into the things you can offer them to make them better camp pros or or just, you know, just have a question, random question. What's the best way to get a hold of Travis? My email is Travis at gocamp.pro. Um, I've caught myself saying a number of times, this is what we're doing with our clients right now. Uh, if any of that stuff sounds interesting, please reach out or you just have questions about unreasonable hospitality. I'd love to talk that too. Thanks Amazing. very much for having me here. You too. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I think we're right. And Kelly, how do, how do our friends get a hold of you? The best way is through my email, Kelly with a Y at hiddenpinesranch.com. Amazing. Amazing. And you can reach me at Howie at CampRobinHood.ca. Uh, and uh, be sure to keep in touch. We want to keep the topics relevant and uh, get everyone to think a little bit, um, you know, more deeply around all the great things that we do. Uh, please don't forget that you can find all of our show notes at Go Camp Pro. Um, slash owners pod. You can find the resources that we mentioned in this episode and lots of good stuff there from our show and other amazing Go Camp Pro podcasts out there. Uh, we hope you really enjoyed this. We want to thank you for listening. Travis, Kelly, great to chat, great to be together. And we hope everyone continues to tune in to the Camp Owners Podcast. Mm -hmm.